Good morning. Good morning. Scriptures this morning are from Matthew 11, 2 through 6. When John, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you see and hear. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Glenn. We titled the message this morning, The Last Prophet. You probably saw that in the bulletin. And you might wonder, why in the world uh, would we call it that? And we're talking about John the Baptist uh, last Sunday and this Sunday and the readings that we follow for the Christmas stories. They're both about John the Baptist. And then, of course, we start talking about Joseph and Mary and the wise men and the, and the angels and the shepherds. All of that as we get real close to the uh, Christmas Day in our different services. But this one today deals uh, with the prophet. He is called the last prophet. Now, to understand that, um, you have to go back to Genesis, first book of the Bible. Chapter 3 in Genesis tells us that because of the fall of Adam and Eve, their sin, and all mankind has been under that sin uh, until even to this day, and the result of sin is death. I mean, it's not, not life, and Jesus comes to, to bring that life. But there's a prophecy in chapter 3 of Genesis that said the seed of the woman, and we know that it's in singular form, and the prophecies have made it clear that they're referring to Jesus. The seed of the woman someday shall come and shall smash the head of the old devil. And we believe that that was done on the cross of Calvary, that our sins might be forgiven, that we get to go to heaven, that the baby Jesus grew up and died for our sins. He that knew no sin became our sin on the old rugged cross so that we might become the righteousness of God. Well, as you work through the Bible, the Old Testament, you you know that the Old Testament is divided into two sections. It's called the Law and the Prophets. Well, Moses is called the Lawgiver, and in the book of Deuteronomy, Moses said there's a there's one to come. He was the prophetic voice before the prophet series started in the Bible and in the biblical times. Well, after Moses went on to heaven, then we have a series of prophets, and they are all summed up by Elijah. Elijah was the one prophet that was taken to heaven. He never died. In the chariot of fire, we have that beautiful in the narthex wood and lay marquetry that Mr. Jim Bell uh, has done for us that shows him being taken to heaven in the chariot of fire. And the last book of the Old Testament... The book of Malachi gave a prophecy that before the Messiah would come, the baby Jesus, before the king would come, that Elijah would return. Now, there were 400 years of silence from the Old Testament to the New Testament, and then all of a sudden, John the Baptist comes on the scene. And we were talking with the children about uh, the birth story. That's such an interesting story. Uh, if you get a chance to read that in the first of Luke uh, about John's birth and how the, the angel had to say, shush to uh, his dad because of his negativity and what a different response that was than Mary how she said well whatever Lord if you know you'll have to explain it to me but your will be done what a difference in the stories that we have right off the bat but John the Baptist grew up of course and became the forerunner of Jesus getting everything ready as well and that's where he is called the last prophet that's what Jesus described him he closes the chapter of the Old Testament and we begin the kingdom of the New Testament, Jesus being the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And Jesus even says, if you had believed in John the Baptist, then he says, then I would have set up the kingdom right here and now. You know, that's very clear in the scriptures. He said, but because you did not receive him, Elijah, the spirit of the prophets, is going to come again someday, and that is what we call the second advent. This is the first advent, the baby Jesus, but the second advent where there's a new heavens and new earth Everything will be made right. Won't that be wonderful? Everything will be made right. The kingdom of God will become the kingdom of of man. You know, it'll come together. 
You know, it, it says you won't even need a light switch. You won't even need the sunshine because Jesus will reign here. I long for that day. That's just going to be absolutely amazing. That's the second advent when the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, you know, the kingdom is right here and present and uh, all of the old devil's army is destroyed and everything is good the way it should be. Everybody worshiping Jesus the correct way in that time. Amen? Well, you, you, you just can't, I just can't get you there, can I? <laughs> So, why would you call him the last prophet? Well, it's very clear that he's the last of that age, but he's coming. The new prophet, again, again, is the Jesus, is the Messiah, King of kings, Lord of lords. Nobody wants to be the last, though, do they? They don't want to be the last. You know, I remember the story of uh, the uh, evangelist, um, David King. He had cystic fibrosis. Some of you remember him, and he tells the story. I've mentioned it a number of times, but I love it. When he was a boy and wanted to play basketball, but he couldn't because of his medical health. And, uh, but his brother, his older brother, was so good, and they were playing yard ball. So he said one day he went out there to play ball with his brother, but he couldn't play, you know. And he said, I want to play, I want to play. And his brother was one of the captains picking, about to pick the team. And then he looked over there, and he saw his brother. I want to play, I want to play. And he said, he picked me first, David said years later. He said, and I just came and buried my head in his chest, and he just pulled me aside and picked the rest of his team. See, that, that's Christ. You know, whether you ever say Christ or not, that's Christ. That's the agape love of God, sacrificial love of God. The Bible says everything that's truly good comes from above. Whether humans even understand it, it is a gift from Almighty God. That's the love of God inside of us. That, that young boy that grew up to be the evangelist I was talking about always felt last, always felt like if he was on a team, he was picked last because of his medical disabilities. You know, many of us in this room probably feel sometimes that, that we're last. You know, God is meeting the needs everywhere else. What about my needs? My needs. That's what this story is all about. The A of our ABCs today is uh, simply a verb that Brother Glenn read to us a few moments ago at the opening from John the Baptist when he was an adult. You see, what happened was John was put in prison because he stood up for something he believed in. He got into trouble because of that and was put into prison. And so the A of our ABCs, he sends a question to Jesus, are you the one that we're looking for? Now, that's a great question. At Christmas time, are you really the one, Jesus, that we're looking for to meet our needs, take care of us, give us eternal life? Are you the one to give us purpose and joy and fulfillment? Now, you've got to understand that John the Baptist had already baptized Jesus. Now, we're talking again as they're both adults now. Already baptized Jesus. He had seen a miracle. He'd seen a dove come out of heaven, light upon Jesus. I don't know if it was symbolic or a real dove, but he knew it was from God because a voice came from heaven, said, this is my beloved son, follow him. And so he baptizes him to fulfill the prophetic voice. And Jesus doing amazing things, fulfilling all the prophecies of the Old Testament. I mean, just doing amazing things. One of the prophecies of the Old Testament that John even preached is that Jesus would set the captives free. It came from Isaiah. That, that's an Old Testament prophecy. It came from Malachi. It came from Elijah. They all said that, you know. And now John is in prison. Jesus is doing amazing things over here. But what about me? Are you the one... What a good question. Are you the one that we, that, we really, that we really should see? You know, you think, well, he saw those miracles. How could that happen? I've wondered that when I read the Old Testament. The Israelites, all the miracles that God showed them, the people of God in the Old Testament, and yet just a few days when things go bad, seems like they've forgotten all that. Well, I think that's the way you and I are. You ever have worries? Ever have fears, anxieties, overwhelming you know, and you don't feel like God's hearing you, and if he is, you don't understand what he's doing and why he's not doing more, you know? Well, you're in good company. This is John the Baptist. This is this great prophet of God. Now, I want you to think of this. This is probably why the story's there for us. You know, um, if you've been here on Wednesday nights, we're doing Max Licato's Christmas series, and um, the first one we did a couple weeks ago, he lifted up a story from 1926. He said there was a medical missionary, uh, an evangelist, that went to the continent of Africa and shared the good news of Christ, and for five years with his medical clinic, ministered to so many people, but nobody came to the little chapel that he built. They just didn't want to be a part of that religious thing, but they would come to the medical needs. He had a child while he was over there, he and his wife, and at five years, the child dies. And he's beside himself. So he builds his own casket and uh, carrying the casket to the, where you're going to bury his little boy. Uh, one of the natives 
saw him and went with him, helped him carry the casket, helped him dig the grave. And then the evangelist said later as he wrote this, he said, I cried and I couldn't stop crying. He said, but the strangest thing happened. He said, as I was crying, the native that was with me looked at me and he finally ran away into the community. He said, and I could hear him shouting, white man, white man cries like us. The next Sunday, the whole community was in church. And so he began to ponder, what, what's going on? They somehow felt that he was totally different. You know, he was like this amazing, brilliant person that could bring all these medical helps to them, but he wasn't one of them. But when he wept, like many of them had lost their children, he was one of them. That's the incarnation. That's the Christmas story. That's the idea of God becoming a human, little baby Jesus, little baby. Where in the world God get that idea? You know, little baby Jesus, when you, when you think about God, you think about, you know, something awesome and powerful and glorious and, and, and maybe even mean and rough and tough and, and all of that. But, but a baby, a humble baby, a baby dependent on us to take care of, oh my goodness. God wants to reveal himself to us in amazing ways, absolutely amazing ways he wants to reveal himself. It's of eternal significance, Eternal significance. You know, I've told you before, I love the old Rocky movies. You know, da 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 You know, and I was watching one late the other night just to calm down, you know, and just working through my, my uh, evening prayers watching Rocky, and I like that, you know. And, and I watched the old one from the 70s. Any of you old enough to remember the 70s, you know? <laughs> and, you know, he was fighting Apollo Creed, the very first one. And, uh, you know, here he is, the underdog, and he can't sleep the night. Uh, before because he feels like he's going to get pulverized and he did <laughs> so you know so he's in the uh, Philadelphia Forum late that night just can't sleep and the uh, sponsor walks by got a big old cigar in his mouth you know and he said hey Rocky what are you doing and he's looking at the picture they got a banner of Rocky and an Apollo Creed you know and he says my trunks my trunks he said you, you got them wrong he said you know it is yellow and black but he said you got the colors you know the stripe and the background mixed up and so the uh, sponsor looks at it with his big old cigar, and he said, Rocky, he said, does it really matter? Does it really matter? You know, he said, I know you're going to give us a good show, but does it really matter? Because he felt, you're going to get pulled. What, what, you know, is that going to be important, you know? Little did he know that Rocky was going to become the champion of the world, at least the champion of Hollywood's world. But that's another movie, too. You know, you have to follow the whole series there. He didn't know that. He didn't know it was very important. I'm telling you this morning that Christmas is internally important to you. The incarnation that God has become one of us. Are you the one we're looking for? What a question. The B of our ABCs. Jesus responds to those disciples. John's in prison. He sends his disciples. They ask him, are you the one we're looking for? Jesus quotes all of, of the things the prophet said. You know, the blind can see, the deaf can hear these miracles that he's doing, the, the lame can leap for joy, and the captives have been set free, but not John now, see? And then Jesus says, tell John. I love this. He stops quoting scripture. He says, tell John, blessed is the man that does not stumble because of me and what he means is stumble by the way I'm doing things in other words don't let me become a stumbling block that's the B of our ABC's has the Lord and his way of doing things become a stumbling block to you think of that now that's hard isn't it that's hard very very hard you know we are to be the light of the world we are to be the light of the world. It's hard doing that sometimes, you know. Travis told us last week that, you know, and he was talking about their, uh, um, their float that had won in that category. And there was a number of, of uh, Polar Express. I know the Michelle Grahams and the Scouts, the Girl Scouts. I mean, there was a number of good ones up there. But Travis said that, that he had borrowed a light bulb. You remember that from last week? Borrowed a light bulb from First Baptist Church. And I kidded him saying that, you know, I guess as being the light of the world, that's our verse for our expansion. We have to borrow from the Baptists. Yes, we do. Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal, Roman Catholic, everyone. We're all the light of the world. Doesn't matter what the name is if you love Jesus. Doesn't matter what the name is, if you love Jesus, we're to be the light of the world. We have to share on, on one another and care for one another and be a part of one another. Do you know the Lord? My good friend Robert, he's in heaven now. 
told me one day he was passing a, a, a down the road, a, I guess it was an abandoned road, but he saw a young lady broke down, need a flat tire, so he pulled off and helped her change the tire and said she had such a sweet spirit. Robert was such an evangelist. He said, he said when I changed the tire, he said, I looked at her and I said, he, I said to her, you must know the Lord. And she paused for a minute, minute Robert told me, he said, she said, I know of the Lord. Now, let me raise that question. Do you know the Lord or do you know of the Lord? He loves you so very much. He loves you so very much. Do you know him? He wants to come in. The incarnation is for you this morning to be a part of your life, to be in you. Now, the C of our ABCs today to take us to the end of the sermon is simply the word Christ because Christ responds to those disciples. And you know what? He doesn't set... The captive free John out of jail in bondage. But he gives him the strength, just like the angels end up giving Jesus the strength at the Garden of Gethsemane to go to the cross. He motivates, he encourages, he gives the right words to take back to John to stand up and be the person that God wants him to be. That's what God's word is for you today. He wants to give you what you need to make it through this time in your life. He wants to speak to you and care for you. The church should be that way. Church is not perfect. Oh my goodness gracious. I'm not perfect. I know you're not perfect either. You know, remember the, the acronym that we have for church, C-H-U-R-C-H, Christ hopes you are coming home? That's what church should be, you know, feeling at home, but home is not perfect. You know that. Think of your own home. <laughs> it's not perfect. Not at all, you know. Do y'all remember the Brady Bunch, any of you TV freaks? <laughs> you remember the old Brady Bunch series? Do you remember when it came out that the, the behind the scenes of the Brady Bunch wasn't as Brady as we, very Brady as we thought it was, you know? Is there really a family like that anyway, that everything is just peachy and rosy? No, 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 you can't find that. Jesus' own personal family wasn't like that. I'm still struggling with Bill Cosby. You know, all of the wonderful children's programs that he gave to us. And look at this, you know, humans are frail. Humans make mistakes, but the church should be providing love, grace, forgiveness, compassion, discipline sometimes. Trying to help a person that may be falling off the wagon to help them get back. You know, sometimes you have tough love as well. You know, there's just things we need to be doing as the kingdom of God. Are you the one we're looking for? Just the other day, I watched another movie with my little girls. You probably haven't heard of this one, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. <laughs> loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it, you know. And do you remember How the Grinch you remember that the symbolism there that he steals Christmas because he couldn't stand it? He couldn't stand somebody else to be happy when he wasn't happy. You know, he took all the waggets and gadgets and zoozles and woozles and all of those trinkets and took it up to Mount Crumpet to dump it, you remember? But then he, when he gets up there in the story, and I remember reading this so many times. I, Amanda, I remember that. We used to read it always at Christmas, and of course it's in movie form now. And, uh, but he went right up there to the dump it from Mount Crumpet, and he said, you know what? He said every Christmas morning, they, the Whoville's down, uh, the Who's down in Whoville, they'll gather and sing, they worship. And so he said, but now they're not going to do that because I got rid of Christmas. So they're going to go, boo-hoo, and they're going to cry. You remember? And he said, i got to listen to that. You remember the story? And so he leans over there. But that's not what he hears. They're still singing praises. They're gathered around the Christmas tree. And I know they're praises because they're singing in a foreign language. Do you remember? You remember that? You know, they're singing the praises of God. And something happens to the Grinch. His heart grows two sizes that day. He feels all toasty inside. It's amazing. And then he takes everything back down there for them to have Christmas. He's changed from the inside out. That's Christ. He's changed from the inside out. And, and even the Grinch himself carved the roast beast. <laughs> Is you the one, Jesus, we should be looking for? Our candle is red. It represents joy. Our poinsettias represent joy. Even if you don't feel joy. Let me end this with this. Praise team, y'all can go ahead and come back on that. Uh, I want you to hear this. You know, all of us have situations in life, struggles, whether it's finances, maybe relationships. 
maybe some friends at church today maybe spoke harshly to you or didn't speak at all. And you're thinking, I wonder what they're thinking. Maybe some of you are struggling with parents or children or, or your surrounding siblings, your spouse. Maybe you're struggling with the government, the church. I mean, you know, they can just go on and on and on. Honestly, honestly now. And I don't mean to downplay any of the struggles, the problems. Does it really matter, Rocky? Does it really matter? Give us a few years when we are left this realm. Does it really matter? What, what matters? What's going to stay? What's going to last for eternity? You know, we're not talking about a few years. We're talking about eternity. Do you know him? Is he in your heart? He can even save the meanest old Grinch there is. And it's our responsibility not to judge, but to love. To guide, lead, direct, discipline, encourage, strengthen, whatever you want to call it. It's our job to pray. If you don't know Jesus, you don't know the Christ child, then just say, Jesus, forgive me. Please help me. Forgive me of my wrongdoings. Help me. Help me. Come into my life. Take lead. Take the, take the leadership of my life. And I guarantee you, church, you do that right now. Your life will be changed.